Nice war shop. This is place the movement and wow, I'm at the sixth part already. Both in my series of going over Maryland's Emerald Nurse Lock as well as his series. Now if you are a newcomer and don't know how Nurse Lock works, I will quickly go over the basics. A Nurse Lock challenge is a challenge where your Pokemon have to be at a certain level and once they are knocked out, you can't ever use them again since so they are dead. And you also can only catch your first encounter of any root, cave, etc. And I'm also gonna do a quick recap of Maryland series so far. He has defeated the first gym leader and is now on his way to Defer Town. I've already commented on one thing from the sixth part of his series. And now it's time to comment on the rest of the video. So let's go! We're setting sail for Duford, baby! Yeah! Let's ride this boat! I'm on a boat! It's a very small boat. In fact, I don't even know how two people can fit in this boat. I mean, this is a game with overworld view, and in most games like that, things like cars, helicopters and so on, look smaller than they actually are. So the boat could easily be bigger than it looks. So it makes sense to me that they would be able to fit in there. You don't say. I like what's hip, happening, and trendy. I'm always checking it out. Listen, have you heard about this new big service? What the heck is a big service? Oh, this is not right. This is not right. That's right. Of course you know. I mean, sheesh. Big service. It's the hottest thing and cool. Wherever you're from, big service is the biggest thing happening, right? Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, absolutely right. Big service is the definition of in right now. Now back when I first saw this video in 2012, this was one of my favorite moments of the Nurse Lock Challenge. And now, eight years later, it still fucking is. Fucking hell yeah, the way you say big service truly is fucking awesome. And as a top of that, you are absolutely right, this is indeed a weird name. And officially licensed big service picture books. <laughs> Those are not appropriate for children. Hold on, what exactly are you on about? Are you implying that big service picture books are porno magazines? What the hell? That makes no sense. If that's not what you're implying, you should make yourself more clear. Because that's the only possibility I can think of. Uh, even if a Pokemon faints and can't battle, it can still use a move learned from a hidden machine. Not a Nuzlocke, bro! Actually, that is a very interesting point. Um, you see... Oh wait, am I all healed up? Uh, I am not. Yeah, you see a Nuzlocke challenges. This is definitely something I need to ponder here. Should your Pokémon faint, and it is the only Pokémon that can learn an HM move, well, chances are you need that in order to proceed through the game. Yeah, I know. So, losing that Pokémon could mean the end of your challenge. Yeah, depending on which interpretation you go. Some people will allow a, um, a surrogate. You know, you can catch something and as long as you don't use it, and as long as no other Pokemon on your team can learn those HM moves, you know, you could go ahead and catch that or revive one of your Pokemon if you're using the, the fainted boxes. You just cannot use it in battle. Here's the way I look at it. The point of not being able to use a Pokemon anymore after they are knocked out is because they died, right? With that logic in mind, you shouldn't be able to use them as hate some slaves either. I mean, let's think about it logically for a moment. Can a dead Pokemon cut boosters or move a huge bolter out of the way? Obviously no, it fucking can't. So if you do run out of Pokemon that can learn that hate some move, in my opinion, yes, your Nuzlocke nice challenge should end there. Because it makes no sense to be able to use a Pokemon that is supposed to be dead to help you outside of battle. A Pokemon being dead should mean that a Pokemon is dead period, in battle or not. Okay, you can't use it in battle. I keep talking to you, woman, why? I don't know, only you yourself can answer that question. And as an added bonus, I'll even throw in a little fish in advice. First you want to face the water and then use the rod. Focus your mind. If you get a bite, pull on the rod. Sometimes you can snag something immediately, but with bigger catches, you'll need to time the pulls on your rod to haul them in. 
Seems legit. About that, I was never a fan of how you face the Generation 3 games. You had to put more effort into facing a Pokemon than in previous games. And that was just unnecessary. There was absolutely nothing wrong with only having to click once to be able to face a Pokemon. And I'm so glad that bullshit was removed in later games. Rawly. Gorge your eyes on this. It's a silk scarf. It's right at the cutting edge of fashion. Yeah, oh, I can see your eyes twinkling. You appreciate my dazzling style. Oh, you're a delight. Here you go. I want you to have it. Oh, yay. Thank you. This scarf is fabulous. Uh, yeah, that's a marvelous scarf that will go with almost any Pokemon. All right, great. Yeah, this will be awesome on no one. It'd be good on any of my normal type Pokemon or Pokemon with normal type attacks. Don't worry about it. Sure, it might be useless to you now, but it could come in handy later on in Nurslock. You never know. What do people do if they need to go to a washroom? Oh, God. Why is all the dialogue so awful in here? <laughs> I don't even know if I can say this. This is so bad. Oh my god, this makes the big service thing even worse. I agree. Seeing some random sensors using the toilet in a public bathroom is a creepy imagery that I didn't need to fucking see. Now I remember, it's all coming back to me now. Aha, I found a hidden Pokeball! Yeah, who needs a dowsing machine or an item finder? I'm so boss anyway. For you, maybe. But the only reason you know the location of hidden items without having to use items like that is because you have been making walkthroughs and shit like that for years. So of course you know where they are located. But for everyone else, mainly myself, it's not so easy to know the location of those items. Hell, I wasn't even aware there was a hidden item there when I first played the game when I was a kid. Alright, Zubat, you're gonna be mine. To be honest, I really kind of wanted a Zubat. I really did. I don't know why, but I just have this feeling like it'll help me. Okay, maybe you don't know the reason why you want a Zubat, but I can give you a perfectly good reason why you should get one. It's finally world form, Crowbat. It's a fucking awesome Pokemon. And it can help you out a ton, not just in the game, but in competitive play as well. I just ate frittata, but no one's even going to know what that is. I mean, they could easily google it to find out. In an age where everyone is using the internet, it's easy and there's no reason not to. I ate like so much candy today, I can't think of anything other than that. Ah, uh, it needs to be like a meal. I mean, I wouldn't mind you naming soup, but after candy. In fact, I'd welcome it. A different pace is a good thing. Now some of you might make the argument that candy is not actual food. Which is a point that I couldn't disagree with more. I mean sure, it isn't exactly healthy, but it's still edible. Which means that it is food by definition. I just really hope this is how you spell frittata. I mean, you could pause the video here, look up how you spell for Tara, and then go back to recording the video. I mean, you have done stuff like that before in your challenge, so why couldn't you do it here? Okay, so I'm back, and I did figure out I was spelling it wrong, so I'm just, I'm gonna name it for Tata, because that is what I ate last. So yeah, your name is for Tata. Oh, so you did look it up. Then what was the point of saying earlier, I hope I'm spelling it right. That is misleading since that wording leads me to believe that you weren't gonna look it up. You should have just said, I don't know how to spell it so I'm gonna look it up. That would have been better. But first I need to know what can learn Flash, cause I'm going to need something with Flash. Oh no, only pizza can learn Flash, that's not good. That's not good at all. I mean, Flash can come in handy. The effect of Flash is to lower an opponent's accuracy. Which honestly is very fucking awesome. Now, Dust Dogs has a low special attack stat. So it desperately needs a move that can help it out. And Flash is that fucking move. By lowering the opponent's accuracy, it would have a better chance of surviving. Personally, I think you should teach that Dust Dogs Flash. Because it really would help it out a fucking lot. Believe me. Well, maybe I don't even... 
Maybe I don't even need flash. Just heat it to fucking dust dogs. What exactly are you losing? I mean, sure, most HM moves like heart and strength are completely worthless in battles, but this is clearly not one of those moves. Like I explained in the last interjection, this is actually a useful fucking move. So not teaching it to dust dogs is a big mistake. Oh, I already talked to you. Why do you keep making the mistake of forgetting what people you already talked to? I don't know, it seems like a weird mistake to me. Looks like if I want to flash, I have to teach it to... to my... oh, that stinks. I get it! You don't wanna teach Dust Dogs Flash! I don't see the logic behind it, but that's not what I have an issue with. What I do have an issue with is that fact that you keep dwelling on this point. If you dwell on the same point too much, it gets old after a while. And I'm gonna have to be honest, this has got an old. Just say it once, twice if you need to, but after that, let it go and talk about some other things. But I will go ahead and I'll try get my obligatory magic harp and do for town. Oh, you'd be surprised. Because I don't think there's anything else. Darn it, not even a nibble. Come on. Ah! Better show your ugly face, darn it. Yeah, this is what I absolutely fucking hate about the Generation 3 games. Facing a Pokemon is such a pain in the ass. In previous games, all you had to fucking do was to use your rod, and that's it. But now, you have to put a little more effort just to be able to catch a fucking Pokemon. Thank fucking goodness, they reverted back to the old ways in the following games. Oh, there we go. Wow, it's so different in these games. Ooh, hey, actually, this is kind of nice. It's a tentacool. Very cool. See? I told you you'd be surprised. That's what's so great about the old road in Generation 3 games and beyond. You get more Pokemon than just fucking Magikarp. Uh, it seems to me these are a little harder to catch, but I got plenty of Pokeballs. Okay, I'm gonna have to name it. I can always name it Squid. I oh, really? Jeez. Well, what the hell did you expect? Tentacle's HP is still close to full. Logic should tell you that you should hit the tentacle with Poison Sting two or three more times, and then use the Pokeball. I mean, you already know how little damage the Poison Sting causes to the tentacle, so why don't you do it? To be honest, I'm actually surprised that you didn't realize this on your own. You know a lot about how the Pokemon games work, in fact, you know more than I do. So you definitely should know this over me. Too far out? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, you only have to hit him one more time before you use the Pokeball. It's not really a, a manly man name, but oh well, I've never really been one to fit the- Or you can use it now, that can also work. Oh, actually, I really want to catch it in a Great Ball. Not really because I feel like I need to, but because look at it, it's blue and red. It's Tentacool's colors. Holy shit, you're right. The Great Ball's colors match the color pattern of Tentacool, as well as its evolution Tentacruel. We didn't have ever noticed that before. So yeah, you are absolutely right. You should use the fucking Great Ball. I don't know if they... I don't know if they're shown as caught in that. Uh, I think that was introduced in Gen 4. I decided to play the game Pokemon Rugby to see for myself if you are right. And I'm sorry man, but you are absolutely wrong. The game absolutely fucking does you with species of Pokemon you have already caught. Oh well, I'll just stick to Pokeballs. Okay you, come on. Hold on a minute, you said earlier on the video that you prefer using a Great Ball. Because the color patterns match the color patterns of Tentacool. So why exactly did you decide to use a regular Pokeball instead? That's a massive missed opportunity if you ask me. If you're worried about running out of Great Balls, you don't have to worry about that. Because it won't be much longer until you can buy one at a fucking Pokemart. Aha! Poison Sushi, yeah! Wow, you just got an image into my head. 
But man, eating sushi at a restaurant and then fucking dying. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Great, I got me some cool Pokemon. Trust me, all of your fucking Pokemon are. I feel so much better about this. This has been a great episode. Can't argue with that. Ooh, I wonder if Sushi can learn Flash. I did my research and found out that no, Tentacool can't learn Flash. Which I'm also surprised by. Those red thingies at the top of his head that look like his eyes but really aren't. Really do look like something that can glow in the fucking dark. Oh, this is great. I finally feel excited. I was so thinking I was going to get a Magikarp. And to be honest, I've never been so excited for a Tentacool before. I don't blame you because Tentacruel, the thing that it evolves into, is pretty fucking cool. And trust me, I strongly believe there will be more surprises on the way. Look at those derps in there. Just derping around. I know I pointed this out in a previous part of the series, but I might as well point it out again since it bothers me as much here as it did then. Why the hell do you call Pokemon derps? It makes absolutely no sense to me. Is that a slang for Pokemon that I'm not aware of? I don't get it. I really fucking don't. All right. Um. Oops. Why on earth do I want to do that? <laughs> I will admit that made me laugh. It might be a dick move to laugh at a mistake, but hey, this is just a minor mistake. Other than that, you're cool. No, only pizza can learn it. Then teach your dirt stocks that move. Now you might think that this is a useless move to use in battle, but you would be wrong. Unlike moves like cotton strength, this move actually is very fucking useful in battle. Because lowering your opponent's accuracy can help you out a ton. Sure, if you have to deal with your opponent using it, it would be annoying as hell. But when you use it, it's very fucking useful because of the reasons that I stated. Alright, well what about Bullet Seed? No one! Bummer. Hey, don't worry about it. I'm sure you will catch a Pokemon capable of learning that move eventually. But be very careful though. In this generation, TMs only last once. So choose the Pokemon to teach that move to wisely. Because if you choose the wrong Pokemon to teach that move, you are gonna regret it. And there will be no turning back. Since I'm right next to him, I don't think it will work. He's close by. Maybe I can talk to him in person. Hey! Yeah, whatever. I assume that you are trying to have a rematch with him. And if I am right, I'm sorry to say, but that's not how it fucking works. You don't get to choose when you have a rematch with another trainer. They call you when they are ready to have a rematch. That usually takes hours. And yeah, I know it sucks, especially if you don't have a lot of free time on your hands. But that's unfortunately how this works. Eh, I'm not gonna bother. It's no VS Seeker. Yeah, about that. The Versus Seeker was fucking awesome. In fact, it's one of my favorite aspects of Pokemon Diamond. But unfortunately, it was never in any Pokemon game before or since then. Except Fire Red and Leaf Green. And to be honest with you, that really bothered me back when Pokemon Black came out. And even though I don't play the Pokemon games much anymore, I'll be honest, it still bothers me even to this day. It should have carried over to the future games. So many Zubats everywhere. They're pretty great for training though, I mean compared to everything else that I've been fighting. An area later on in the game happens to be a better place for training than an area from earlier on in the game. Wow, what a huge revelation. Seriously man, was there any point in bringing that up? Of course this is a better place for training than anything that you've experienced from earlier on in the game. The enemies that you face become harder to beat as you progress through the game. That's true for almost every fucking game in existence. So what you're doing now is stating the obvious. Uh oh. Alright, now let's see what happens. Wait a second. I think I'm gonna have to use my combust gun. Oh, I'm so lost in here. You know, you wouldn't have to deal with having shown it to space on your screen to see where the hell you're going. If you taught your thirst stocks, fucking flash. I mean seriously, why the hell didn't you? I think you did a big mistake by not doing it. 
Hello, Zubat. Wow, level 10. Man, that would have saved me a lot of time. I mean, you only have to train your Zubat for a few fucking minutes in order to reach that level. So I don't think it would make much of a difference either way. I have no clue where I'm going. Well, maybe you would be able to navigate better if you used flash on your fucking dust talks. I promise, this is the last time I bring this up. Oh man, that would have been awesome to get on my team and Aaron, wow. That would have been cool. I agree! Akron, it's final evolution. Is it just a fucking awesome Pokemon? It absolutely is! One of the best in that generation. Not one of my personal favorites, but I mean one of the best in terms of how good it is in battle. Now I can't wait until it gets wing attack. I don't remember what level it does. Unfortunately, you have a long way to go. It won't learn wing attack until level 21. And you will be long off the island by then. Ooh, an Everstone. Yeah, that'll really help me out. Keep me from evolving my Pokemon. Seems smart. I mean, Everstone isn't all that bad. Did you know that the unevolved Pokemon learns her moves at an earlier level? Then their evolved counterparts. That is a good reason to not evolve a Pokemon right away. And there are also some instances when an unevolved Pokemon learns a move that its evolved counterpart can't learn. This is the case with Trappins, for example. Hey, you jerk. Why you do that to me? Smack. Big service. Hold on, why did you say big servers right there? It came right out of fucking nowhere, and it doesn't even make sense in this context. I have so many poison types on my team, what is up with that? That's a strange coincidence. Virta never noticed that until now. You know, you should start your own fucking gym. It would be an interesting one for sure. Oh man. If I run into one psychic type, I am dead. I am dead. Well, it's a good thing there are no psychic types in this cave then. Except for the opera that can only use teleport. Hell, or even run the entire fucking island for that matter. Oh. I already have leech life, that's right. I was thinking it only had poison sting for some reason. Hold on, you were expecting super to learn poison sting? Really? How the hell does that even begin to make sense? What the heck? Come on, I can't even see that hit point. I can see it just fine. Even then, you can't see your opponent's hit points, period. So how is this any different? Move, steel wing? What? Dude, that's really nice of you. That's really overpowered at this point in the game. Oh my god. If I could teach that to my Zubat, that would be such a strong Zubat. Come think of it, you're absolutely right! This is interesting, I never noticed that before! Alright, hurry along now. That's rude! Is that really the appropriate reaction to someone who gave you a move that's very fucking powerful for this part of the game, like you said? What about you? I'm confused, what exactly are you referring to? What happening? No, It's not strong. Don't worry. This thing's weak! Well, what the hell did you expect? You're still very early on in the game. Hope this thing doesn't get like a magical critical hit or something. Magical critical hit? How is that any different from a regular one? I don't know, this seems very weirdly worth it to me. I'm gonna have to train here forever though. I mean, not really. It won't be much longer until you reach Route 110, which is a much better place to train. Well, even though... She's a female, but, you know, Batwoman? I don't know. Doesn't even do that much. At least it can do more damage than Leech's life. You can at least give it credit for that. And honestly, I disagree. This actually does a lot of damage for a move that you can access shortly on in the game. Is it common in the games before this? That you can't get a move that powerful? As far as I know, no! So you should be very fucking happy to be able to reach that move this early on. Yeah, you're doing it all by yourself. This is so great. I'm so proud of you, Vritana. And trust me, you will be even more proud when she evolves into a fucking crowbot. Well, my Zubat's way better than your Zubat. 
Aren't you forgetting something? The fact that this is a wild battle and not a trainer's battle. How do I know this? Because clearly no one made an eye contact with you before this battle started. And you can clearly see the fucking Pokeball icon close to the hate speed bar. How the hell can you even think that particular super belongs to anyone? The fact that you confuse a wild battle with a trainer battle is just baffling to me. <laughs> It's gonna take so long. Three hits to knock out anything, but still. Actually, stealing is far better than you're giving it credit for. I mean, think about it. This early on in the game, the best moves that you have access to are usually moves like Tegul and Scratch. They aren't powerful moves at all. This move actually does a lot of fucking damage if you take into account that you access it very fucking early on in the game. And of course it doesn't do a massive amount of damage. You turned it to a fucking super, what did you expect? But again, it still does more damage that you're willing to give it credit for. Trust me, Leech Life would have taken years to knock anything out. So, you acknowledge that Steel Wing does a lot of damage, yet you are still Underestimating how powerful it is. What the hell, man? And I am so amazed. I don't think I've seen Supersonic confuse me once. It's weird. That can only be explained by luck. But then again, a lot of things in Pokemon battles revolve around luck. So I'm not that surprised. Let's see, do I need to heal really badly? I don't need to heal really badly. I mean, the next Pokemon Center is just around the fucking corner. So it wouldn't hurt. Hiding. To my knowledge, I might be wrong, but if there is something exciting, I will be sure to show you, don't worry. Um, and look, I know, Supersonic actually worked! Aw oh, yeah, my defense is up. I'm so good. I don't even care. Hold on a minute, you think it's fucking awesome? That your opponent finally manages to use Supersonic? I'm confused. How exactly is the opponent? Doing better at battle than you are a good thing. I don't see how it's a good thing at all. I mean, this is a Nurse challenge, so wouldn't you rather wanna win? I'm sorry, man, but I'm confused. Why was this not set to stereo? Wow. Sorry about that. How exactly does this option work? Now, I was gonna do my own research to find it out. But when I googled Pokemon Rappi Stereo, I didn't find an answer, which is why I'm asking here in this video. Alright, now back to the training. Yeah, I can't really blame you. This episode already is long enough as it is. I am done with part 6 of Merlin's Pokemon Emerald Dash Lock. What are my overall thoughts on the video? But there is nothing else I can say aside from the fact that it's fucking awesome. Let's move on to part 7 of his Nash Lock. How's it going everyone? Maryland here and um, yeah, this is just a little training video because I wanted to show everything But it's really boring and nothing really happens in it. Oh, you'd be surprised by how much there actually is to comment on regarding this video Which there is so I'm just gonna put some snazzy music in the background um, Still looking for some good Pokemon ones. I found a few But I need to still get the permissions to do so I mean, there's Freever music all around the internet. You could try using some of that, just saying. Oh, and, I don't know, I mean, it's like, I don't want to throw the champion theme into everything. I just want something, you know, kind of light in the background, something to make the training and the question and answer sessions a little bit more entertaining. Now, there is something that I want to say regarding that. Some of my say this is anecdotal evidence, but bear with me. Back when I made my series, Pokemon Gangster, I often used co-operated music in that series, and I never got a strike because of that. The worst thing that's happened is that I got the video blocked, and that happened very rarely. Now obviously using music for monsters doesn't fall into fair use, as you aren't commenting on the music that you're using. But my point is, the chances of you getting into trouble for using that music are very low. So I think you would be just fine. One question I get very often is, how are you recording this? Are you using an emulator? No, I am not using an emulator, alright? I'm using something called the DS Capture, 
It's basically a modified Nintendo DS fat system that I did not do myself. It's a guy on the internet. Um, he makes little things. He, he basically modifies the Nintendo DS system. That's interesting. I wish I had something like that. And do you have reached the end of the video? Now we're gonna continue with this series until I've reached the end of the fucking Nuzlocke. I will not stop when Maryland has finished the game. Oh no. He made a few episodes of the series after he finished the game. And I will be covering those videos as well. Let's all hope that I will be finished with his Nuzlocke before 2030. Thank you all for watching and you all have a fantastic day.